A DI box or direct box is a device that converts a high impedance instrument level signal to a low impedance microphone level signal and also balances the signal in the process. A DI box is one of the most useful tools that you can have, both for live sound and in the studio. Let's take a look at when and how to use a direct box, and along the way, we'll listen to some audio examples so that you can decide if you really need one. One of the most common ways to use a DI box is to connect a bass guitar or electric guitar to a microphone input. Why would you want to do that? Well, there are a few reasons. Maybe you want to preserve a direct signal that isn't affected by the instrument's amplifier so that you can reamp it or pass it through an amplifier plugin later on. Or perhaps you just want a clean signal that isn't susceptible to leakage from nearby instruments. There are, however, a few problems with connecting an instrument directly into a microphone input. First of all, the pickups on the bass guitar or electric guitar output a high impedance instrument level signal, while the microphone input on your mixer is designed for a low impedance microphone level signal. This is where a DI box comes in. The DI box is essentially a transformer that will convert the high impedance instrument level signal coming from the instrument into a low impedance microphone level signal. Most DI boxes have an XLR output and a quarter inch through output. That way you've got a low impedance mic level signal that goes to your mic input and a high impedance instrument level signal that goes to your amp like normal. But how big of a difference does this actually make? What'll happen if you connect an instrument without a DI box? Many audio interfaces have instrument inputs built in. For example, my Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 has an instrument switch right here on the front that toggles the input impedance. Would using a DI box make a difference if the interface already has an instrument input? Well, let's set up a test. I'll connect a guitar to the input of this Radial Pro DI Passive Direct box and connect the output of the DI box to input one on the interface. Then I'll connect the guitar directly to input two on the interface and set that input to instrument mode. Once I've made a recording of each setup, we'll be able to compare them side by side. As you can hear, there's only a very subtle difference. The DI into the microphone input and the guitar into the instrument input are slightly different, but both totally usable. If your mixer or audio interface doesn't have an instrument input, you'll run into some bigger problems. Let's change input two to line, which will change it back to a low impedance input. We'll also need more gain because the input is expecting a line level now instead of an instrument level. Here, you'll notice that there's a pretty significant roll off of the high mid and high frequencies, although the difference is a bit more noticeable when the signal is saturated by an amp modeling plugin. So, this means that you should definitely use a DI box if your mixer or your interface doesn't have a dedicated instrument input. A DI box has another benefit aside from proper impedance matching. It also balances the unbalanced signal coming from the guitar. I made a full video about balanced connections and how they work if you want to learn more, but the important thing to know here is that the balanced signal can travel much further than an unbalanced signal without picking up too much noise. So let's imagine you want a direct signal from an instrument on stage at a concert or an instrument in the tracking room at a studio. If you try to run the instrument cable longer than about 20 feet, it'll start to pick up a lot of noise along the way. Using a DI box, you can keep the unbalanced connections short from the instrument to the DI and from the DI to the amp while running the balanced output of the DI the long distance to the mixer input. 
Let's set up another test to listen to how big of a difference this makes. Now, for good reason, it's kind of hard to find an instrument cable that's longer than about 20 feet, so I've strung together a few 15-foot instrument cables with these couplers. We're going to run the same test as before, but this time I'll use a long XLR cable between the DI box and input 1 on the audio interface, and I'll use a long chain of instrument cables from the guitar to input 2 on the audio interface. This time I'm going to keep the instrument button engaged on input 2. <laughs> As you can hear, in addition to the rolled off high frequencies, there's also considerably more noise in the unbalanced signal than in the balanced signal, which is even more distracting when the signal is passed through an amplifier plugin. This feature of a DI box can be helpful for just about any signal source that needs to travel over a long distance. If you need to send a signal from a keyboard, a smartphone, a laptop, a TV, or anything else with an unbalanced output, a DI box is an easy way to balance the signal. Another advantage of a passive DI box is that there's no direct connection between the input and output, which means that a direct box can eliminate buzz and hum caused by ground loops. So if you're hearing a buzz, you might try putting direct boxes in the audio connections between the various devices. This is just one difference between an active and passive DI. To learn more, watch the video that's on your screen now. I'll see you there.